Hey YouTube, I'm going to make a pretty quick video here on how to install or reinstall your Windows operating system. Um, these are really going to be the basics on how to go about doing this and you might want to reinstall Windows if you have some huge error that you can't fix, you need to update, it's really slow and you, it's just bogged down and a fresh install would definitely repair that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is back up all of your data. You can do this by buying a USB flash drive if you don't have one or a USB hard drive if you don't have one and then going through your My Music, Pictures, Documents, Games, any, anything that you've saved to your computer. Any, keep in mind that um, doing a fresh install of Windows will absolutely delete everything on the computer so you're going to want to back up uh, anything that you're going to want. So with that said, open up your CD or DVD drive grab your Windows installation disk. This happens to be Windows 7 Release Candidate 1. came out yesterday. Uh, it's build 7100 and I'm going to format my Windows 7 Beta 1 and my Windows Vista Ultimate partitions into one big partition. A partition is kind of like your hard drive divided into two pieces so you can dual boot or have two copies of Windows on your computer. Don't close it yet but just push it shut like that and then shut down your computer. If Vista takes too long, I'll just kill it. What we're going to do here, um, looks like it's going to want to install updates. I don't care. Um, first thing you want to make sure is that your BIOS is set to boot as CD or DVD. If not, press on at a Dell, it's F2. On an HP, it's F10 on a Lenovo or IBM it's F1 and then usually on the Acer's I think it's F2 on an Acer or maybe it's F10 but it's usually one of the F keys to open up the BIOS. Close the drive with it off then hit the power button. You're going to see your BIOS here this happens to be an HP this is a Pavilion DV6809WM there's your BIOS it's just going to do a quick hardware check as your BIOS usually does and then it's going to look at your DVD or CD and see what's on it and it should be able to recognize that it needs to boot into that. Yep, there's the prompt. Press a key. There we go. Windows is loading files. Windows Vista looks about, about the same, although it takes a little bit longer as Vista tends to do. But within about 30 seconds you can see that bar is a little bit wider as it moves along the gray won't take too long. Uh, with everything backed up, which you should have done by now, we're going to finish booting into this DVD and you can keep that data side by side so you can restore that in uh, about an hour when we have Windows installed. For uh, those of you thinking about Windows 7, I have a video showing you how to dual boot with your Vista or your XP currently installed. Uh, it's actually pretty easy and Windows 7 is really fantastic. I, I've been really happy. I've been using it since, I don't know, last October of 08 with uh, build 6801, 6956, 7000, 7077, and now 7100. Release candidate 1. So here's the new Windows 7 boot screen that's been around since I think 6956. All those numbers, by the way, are Windows build numbers, if you're not really familiar with that. It's all good. And then we should get a setup window here. There we go. Select your language, time, and currency format, and then your key... Sorry about that. And then your keyboard <laughs> and input. So that's default for me. And then install now. If you want to wipe your whole hard drive of everything on it, which is the best thing to do during a Windows installation, uh, just make sure that you do have everything backed up. Um, I'll show you how to do that now. Setup is starting. Windows Vista setup is really the same. and This just has a little different picture. Um, you might actually want to read that, but I don't think I ever have. I accept the license term. Check the box. Click Next then you're going to see which type of installation do you want. If you want to upgrade your copy of Windows, like if you want to upgrade Vista to 7 or XP to Vista, do upgrade, but I don't recommend that. It just makes a very cluttered installation. I'm going to select Custom, 
and it's going to show you all of your partitions. Select the one or ones that you want to delete. Click Drive Options over here to expand that. I'm going to delete all three of these. That's pretty much just going to unmount it, I believe. Now I have disk zero, unallocated space, 111 gig, 111.8. So I'm going to make a new partition. Okay. Looks like it wants to make a 100 meg partition for drivers or some sort of swapping utility. Um, partition 2, let's format that. It's automatically going to format it in NTFS, which is the best file extension or file system, rather, for Windows. 111.6 gig. Once that's set up, click uh, Next. And now it's going to begin copying Windows files, which is already done, expanding Windows files, installing features, installing updates, and completing the installation. Please keep in mind that when you get in inside of your new Windows setup or installation, you're going to have to set everything up again. That means your password, your email. Uh, you will not lose email as long as it's something like Yahoo or Google or Gmail, rather, AOL, AIM, all that stuff. Those are online. But if you use Microsoft Outlook or something like that that's actually stored on the computer, you will lose that. So I recommend backing that up if you're interested in keeping any of it. Anything you have in your SD slot, if you've got one, any flash drives, um, really is not going to be affected as long as you don't try to install it on that piece of hardware if it recognizes it. However, you can actually run Windows off of an iPod. Uh, kind of slow, but I've done that. You can run it off an SD card and you can run it off a flash drive, providing that your drivers, BIOS, and hardware in general supports that. So anyways, with Windows 7 on this hardware, it's AMD TL60, 2 cores at 2 gigahertz, 4 gig of DDR2 RAM, 667 megahertz there. Dual channel is enabled. Uh, 120 gig, 5400 RPM, I think it's a Western Digital Drive in this. It's a SATA, serial ATA. DVD R, um, R, -bur R burner, RW. It is not the uh, light scribe though, but that's okay. This, I have a review on the laptop, but it comes with this clicker. It's actually pretty nice. I like it. So anyways, that should be the basics to help you install Windows. It is going to reinstall or uh, restart your computer a couple of times during the installation. Um, one thing, if you're new at this, this might be the first time for you. When it restarts, I think it restarts after it finishes expanding files. Please note that that will stay on zero for about five minutes, and then it starts to go up fairly rapidly on decent hardware. But it's going to restart and then it's going to ask you if you want to boot the DVD again. Well don't do that unless you want to start setup over again. I know that could be confusing. Um, specs that Microsoft recommends for Windows 7 are half a gig of RAM and I think it's like 1.2 gigahertz. I would suggest 1.5 gigahertz and a gig and a half between a gig and two gig of RAM. Two gigs the sweet spot and one point probably 8 gigahertz is the sweet spot for that. And as you can see, there we go, 1%, and it'll, it'll go on. It'll go on. This is pretty decent hardware. Definitely not a real high-end gaming machine. It's NVIDIA, I don't know, 630 N-Force, 7150 G-Force, 128 meg dedicated. It'll do Windows. <laughs> That's about it, trust me. It's rated at 3.2 in Windows, 6%. So anyways, there you go. That's how to install Windows Vista or Windows 7 because they're pretty much the same. Windows XP is a little bit different, still the same idea, although it doesn't have the pretty GUI. It's, it's just a blue screen with a white bar at the bottom giving you information and then it does boot you into a uh, non-user interactive setup that can bring up a couple Explorer windows. It's not even Explorer.exe, I, I don't think. But anyways, setting up Windows is not that difficult once you've learned how to do it. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, comments, or concerns, please drop me a line, uh, whether that's my email or my YouTube channel. And uh, thank you for watching.